Hey, everybody, welcome to Village. It is wonderful to have you here today. I am with Billy Ionova. She is the host of Unlock Your Child's Full Potential. When I was thinking about what to do about this podcast today, I was looking at how do we unlock that potential? I thought about this exercise and that is the deep lunge. What made me think about it is yesterday in my yoga practice, oh my gosh, did it remind me how much I sit. All of our kids are sitting and how much do we need to break up that hip flexor connection? Another thing you'll see is I'm standing today so that I can straighten out my hip flexors as well. Thinking about ways to help straighten out those hip flexors for the kids, like a deep lunge, that exercise will reset their brain and help them unlock their full potential. But let's dig in today and find out a little bit more about what Billy has in store for unlocking full potential. Welcome to the podcast, Billy. It is great to have you here. How are you? Really? Mary, thank you for having me on the show. I would love to discuss parent-child communication with you and be of service to the parents listening. Fabulous. So let's uh, talk, take a little time and look at Billy's bio. She is a mom of three lovely girls. Huh, God bless you. You have girls. Oh, <laughs> I, love that. I have one. Of, I have one of each. I did get uh, that, that little gift of having one of each. She believes that as parents, we have a unique role in nurturing the potential of that special human being we, that it was entrusted to our care. We can't expect school and the teachers to do everything, and we don't want to let the environment decide who our kids become. It's up to us as, to coach our children on how to be successful and fulfilled. That's her goal with the podcast talk to as many parents, educators, experts, you name it, and ask questions. Look for universal principles to find out how many tools is possible to be a better parent and give your kids a head start in life. Fabulous intro. I love the way you wrote your bio. That's amazing. So tell us a little bit about what it is that you see we need to do to unlock our child's full potential. Terry, I started the podcast with the idea that we need to focus on the lessons and the skills we want to teach our kids to give them a head start in life, because the earlier you start, the better. Mm -hmm. But after doing uh, 30 or so interviews with people from various backgrounds, I realized there's a common theme everyone agrees on. That is that in order to have any influence over our kids, to teach them the lessons we want, we need to establish ourselves as a trusted adult in their lives. So we need to first work on our relationship with them. How do we do that? How to build that strong bond? By treating them with respect, by making them feel seen, heard, understood. Unfortunately, that's easier said than done because it doesn't come naturally to many of us. Many of us weren't raised that way we were parented with punishments, threats, expectation of obedience. When we ourselves are in a triggering situation, we revert to those methods and we don't even recognize that. So my idea is to raise awareness around that. Hmm. That's really a hard habit to break. When oh. you have been trained your entire life on punishment for behavior, how do you break that habit? Oh, yeah, it takes a lot of time to become well-versed in other methods. I I admit I still have those threatening thoughts in my head. Like even uh, my mentor, Wendy Snyder, um, she started coaching when her daughter was three. In a recent interview, she shared that now when her daughter is 13, she finally feels free <laughs> from that. So we took her 10 years and she's ahead of most of us because she's a coach. She's a parenting coach. So my idea is get aware first so you can start working on it and start working now because you don't have so much time. Kids just, they get older so easy, so fast and we need to start now. Oh yeah. 
That magical date called the 18th birthday, it's like you have full control one day and no control the next. It, it, I don't know how old your kids are, but mine are now adults. One of the things that comes back to me a lot from my daughter is you always had such expectations. You always wanted me to do it your way, not give me a chance to figure it out my way. I was like, hmm. I didn't understand it until I started doing this and reaching out to other people and getting other people's perspectives. You're totally right. It created trauma in her life because of the idea of punishment. So what are some of those fixes? I know that you have a free thing that has 10 fixes for working with your kids. So tell us a couple of those fixes that are on that handout. I would love to do that. But first, I wanted to mention something that you said. Now I realize once she's a young adult that I could have done some things better. My idea with the podcast is exactly that. Let's prepare ourselves. I am a believer in preparation. It's funny how we prepare for a job interview, for a trip abroad. We study so many years for a profession, for to practice certain professions, but we are expected to figure out parenting by them by ourselves. And I think that parenting is such a big part of our lives. We need to study the subject, read the books, talk to other parents, find a coach, buy a course, just do something to, because you probably are doing many of those things right, but you do have some blind spots. So I believe in preparation. <laughs> With that in mind, this guide, 10 mistakes, 10 common communication mistakes that parents make, and the tiny tweaks we can make that have a, a great impact on our kids' lives. One of those is we inevitably offend and our kids make mistakes and offend our kids. My parents used to just uh, say nothing and wait some time to get over it, right? My behavior, if it's not, it happened. And what I think is better to do is to own it and apologize to a kid when you make a mistake. Share how you prefer to handle it, to have handled it. I still do those mistakes. I yell from time to time. And I'm, but I go to my kid and I say, I apologize for yelling. I shouldn't have, you don't deserve that kind of treatment. And I should have taken a minute to calm myself before I come and interact to you. And th um, this is something I believe parents should do more often, apologize to their kids. This opens up room for their kids to come and admit mistake and apologize. It's okay to make mistakes. Everybody makes them, own them and apologize. I even make it a point to do something nice for the kid after that. Maybe an extra bedtime story. Maybe help out with a chore around the house that she has to do and I'm doing it instead of her. Something to make her feel better, not just say the words. It sounds also like you're opening up the opportunity for your student, your child to ask more questions. Mm, yeah. Having that apology moment and asking questions really does get at the core and the root of helping childs unlock their potential. Questions is another one of those. We sometimes feel like teaching our kid a life lesson, but now, well, for example, I have some time now, some spare time. I feel like it. Let's deliver a lecture. <laughs> That's not the way it works. I think it's much better if we try to be more of a listener to watch for those teaching moments because there are a lot of them and kids love to ask questions when they're interested in something. That's the right time to impart wisdom and keep it brief because their attention span is not long, but make it a point to answer, <laughs> answer their questions. Because it's not so convenient sometimes. You can just brush it off and let it unanswered. But I think that if they know we are ready to answer the questions, they'll, they'll come to us for answers mm -hmm. and not to their peers, not to Google. They'll know that we are there for them to answer the questions. That is opening up the communication so that kids have the potential to ask questions. because in 
unlocking their potential means unlocking their curiosity. So getting that that creativity, the curiosity, the wonder will open them, open their brains to things they may not have thought about before. Things that may yeah. be impossible at first. I think that some parents are afraid they're not going, going to know the answer to a question, but I think it's okay to just say, I don't know. And we have to check that. We have to research. It's okay to not be that perfect persona that know it all authority, because that's unrealistic. They should know our kids that we're not perfect. We don't know everything. I think that makes for being vulnerable in that regard is so good because then kids are more open to come to us and share about their mistakes and fears because they will feel we'll understand because we ourselves are not perfect. True. I think the I don't know opens up an opportunity to collaborate with your child and find the answer together. I have a whiteboard behind me. I also have the paper. Okay, I don't know. So what do we know? We can write down the what do we know? What do we need to find out? Help the kids understand and organize their thoughts with coming up with the answer and not that we should give it to them in the first place. Let them figure it out, but guide them towards their research so that they can find the answer themselves. Yeah, I love that. That's a great way to exercise their cognitive functions to show them how to work by themselves. I also includes that. a little bit of writing. If you get them to do some of the writing on different surfaces, it's going to improve their fine motor abilities. What things do you have on that list that you can share today? I would like to share one more. There is in our attempts to teach kids what we know, we are often and equip, equip them with essential life skills, we find ourselves constantly pointing out their mistakes. I've done that with my oldest one a lot. I think it's a better approach to focus on positive reinforcement. They should know that we see their efforts, we see how they're getting better, and not just correcting them. Finding a way to, to mention when they're doing something right. I love the way you opened the door for the old lady. I love the way uh, you tried to problem solve with your sister instead of hitting her. So these positive reinforce reinforcements go a long way. A positive ticket, I call them. A funny thing I recently read is that our brain is designed to focus on the negative. So if I correct my kids five times today, I have to praise her 25 times for her. So the ratio is one to five for her to not remember only the negative part of it. So we have to be <laughs> really aware of that. It's going to take a lot of work in for humanity to shift uh, and grow the positive pieces of reinforcement my daughter constantly says, yeah, I like to play my video games so I get my dopamine fix. I'm like, what other things can you do to get the dopamine fix? Be Find something new to, to do to get that dopamine fix. Yeah, I understand what you're saying about the positive negative ratio. I think there's a lot of history behind why yeah. that. Daughter Educational Consulting sponsors this podcast. As we talked about a moment ago with the need five positives to negate the 25 negative, we need to do something different with our interventions with our kids. Daughter Dysgraphia Method, the course, the self-study course is just the beginning, just the tip of the iceberg on making that shift. And what that course concentrates on is the connections between reading to writing and how they overlap and how they're different. What are some of the things that might be happening in that child's brain so that we can get them to access their full potential? Because there's more to the story than just fine motor skills. Okay, the guide, it's a cheat sheet. 
is at unlockyourchildsfullpotential.com forward slash cheat sheet. It's called Unlocking Preteen Communication, but it's actually these 10 communication stakes. Why I called it that way is because I think once we have a preteen, we can start to feel the need for those tools. It's when we start to see the eye rolls, the back talk, the one word answers, and we realize, okay, I might need some help in this aspect. This is why I called it that way. You can find me on Instagram at your child's full potential. My podcast is called Unlock Your Child's Full Potential. You can listen to it anywhere you can find podcasts. And my website is unlockyourchildsfullpotential.com. Wonderful. It has been a joy getting to know you a little bit better, Billy, and understanding some of the things that are going on out there in the world of parent-child relationships. You're right. There's a lot more that we can uncover. The Writing Glitch has been is released on the second and fourth Tuesday of every month. Make sure you subscribe and write that review, please. If you want to listen to some previous episodes, thewritingglitch.com is available for you. And it's also available wherever podcasts are uh, distributed. Remember, you were put here for such a time as this. Thank you so much, Billy, for being here. Thank you, Sherry.